guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Learning Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for Napoleons or if you're Italian you call it mille foglie or if you're French which is this is a, a really popular French classic dessert. I'm not even going to try to sound like I know how to say it but it's like mille feu or something like that which just means a thousand um, layers. So basically this is a really easy recipe. It requires a few different steps, but it really is easy and I wanted to share with you because one, it's been so highly requested here for years, and two, it's one of those desserts that nobody really makes at home. I don't know why, because it's so easy, um, so I'm excited to share with you. To get started, you'll need a few ingredients to make the custard, such as whole milk, I've got all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, granulated sugar, three egg yolks, and you'll need vanilla bean paste. Or you can also use a vanilla bean and just scrape out the little seeds. So it's really easy and straightforward. I mean, it doesn't really get any easier than this custard. All I'm going to do is put all my ingredients for my custard in this in the saucepan. This is like the same custard I made when I made um, my fruit tart, my Nona's fruit tart. This is the same custard we used um, and it's just, it works every single time. This is my Nona's recipe and um, it's the only really custard, the base um, custard that we use for most everything because it just works so well. And then a good teaspoon of vanilla bean paste which is just the most fantastic smelling thing in the world. And I love that it's just, look at those little seeds. You see that? That is like um, caviar for dessert. <laughs> I just want to get it off that. And then because this is a non-stick uh, saucepan, I'm just going to take a silicone whisk and just whisk everything together to combine. And then I'm going to get this onto the stove. All I'm doing is just whisking to combine it. And now I'm going to get this onto the stove on medium heat and cook my custard, stirring it with my wooden spoon for about five, six minutes or so, or until it thickens really nicely. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. That is just gorgeous. You can see it coats the back of a spoon, and if I run my finger down, it stays separate. That's when you know you're at the right consistency. Now, I just want to strain this through a fine sieve into a bowl. Just because if any eggs curdled or any of the egg yolks curdled or if there's any bits of flour that didn't get blended well, you know, all that stuff doesn't go into your final product. So I am just scraping this out because I want to make sure I get every little bit out of this and then just pass it through a sieve. You can see it's like gorgeous ripple of golden vanilla custard that is going to just be fantastic with the pastry and the jam. It's just phenomenal. You see in here, all that stuff that didn't get blended really smoothly. I don't want that into my final dish. So I just strain that out. And now what I need to do is I need to cover this with plastic wrap. And it's really important that the plastic wrap is actually touching the custard itself. Pop it into the fridge for a few hours to cool completely. And then we will be ready to move on to the next step. Now I have my work surface sprinkled with some confectioner sugar and I just unrolled a sheet of puff pastry that I had thawed in the fridge. This is just store bought puff pastry um, and I also have a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment paper. I'm adding a little bit more sugar because I don't want this to stick and then just to kind of, I'm not really rolling this out to make it bigger but just rolling it out a tad to get it going, to get it a little bit more relaxed. And now I'm making half the recipe because I want to save the other half for tomorrow because I do have people coming over tomorrow for dinner. So I'm going to make three tonight and then three tomorrow and then save tonight. Joe and I will have one and then save one for tomorrow and then I'm going to have four in, all in total. So now what I want to do is I've got my puff pastry in front of me. I want to cut this in nine equal pieces. So let's see, three, three, yeah, that looks about right. And don't worry if they're not perfect, because remember, this isn't going to come out of some sort of uh, perfect bakery or anything like that. This is just coming out of your kitchen, and I just love it when things look homemade, so I make no apologies if things are not perfectly squared or whatnot. And then I just place them on my parchment paper. Actually, what I want to do really quickly is just dust with confectioner sugar, and it's really important, otherwise everything starts to stick. I'm going to put them on there like so, and now I want to pop these into the freezer for about 10 minutes, and in the meantime, I'm going to get my oven preheated to 400, and then after they come out, I will show you the next step. 
These were in the freezer for 15 minutes and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle the tops with more confectioner sugar. Now it sounds odd but trust me when I tell you this works really well. Then take another piece of parchment, place it on top like so and then take a baking sheet that's about the same size or it should be the same size so it fits well over the top and then you need to weigh this down. I just use four ramekins and now what this does the weight helps these stay flat as they bake, they don't puff up because if they puff up too much then there's you know, a bit of an issue because traditionally they should be quite thin and flaky. So I'm going to pop this into the oven that I have preheated at 400 for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes I'm going to remove the top baking sheets with the ramekins and then the top piece of parchment paper, flip over the little squares, pop it back in the oven for a few minutes or until it's lightly go on, or until they're beautiful golden brown color, let them cool and then we are ready to assemble. My little puff pastry squares were in the oven with my little contraption with the baking sheet and the ramekins for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes I took that out, just flipped these over and baked them for 5 more minutes and they are beautiful golden brown. That powdered sugar makes almost like a lovely glaze on top of these, they're just they're just gorgeous. So now what I've got is my cream that's nice and cold. I've got some seedless raspberry jam. I just popped this into the microwave for about 30 seconds just to get it a bit more loose. And then I have some fresh raspberries here and of course a little more powdered sugar. And now we are ready to start assembling. This is so easy you would not believe it but I'm going to show you because it's one of those things like I mentioned, they just feel like people don't make it home very often. So let's see, you need three pieces each. You take a pastry brush, dip it into your jam, and you brush it over the top of one of the little squares. Then you take a little bit of your custard that's beautiful and velvety. Always make sure that when you assemble these, you assemble these on a different plate that you're going to serve them on because sometimes they tend to get a little bit messy and you don't want that to happen. You want them to be nice and clean when you put them on your plate. Then you take another little sheet, you brush it with some jam. All you're doing is just repeating that same step. You brush it with jam and then a little more custard. Look at the vanilla beans. Oh, it's just so beautiful. And then all you're going to do, I'm just so thrilled. Do it like so, like a little sandwich. Right? You squeeze it just ever so lightly. You take a third one and you pop it on top like so. Confectioner sugar over the top. Now traditionally you should have royal icing on the very top which I think is making things way too complicated and it's not necessary whatsoever. It's just adding um, extra sweetness with no flavor. So I prefer powdered sugar and then fresh, fresh, <laughs> fresh raspberries. And I mean, tell me that's not absolutely gorgeous. Now also, you really should let this set into the fridge for a little bit because what happens is that the custard and the jam helps everything sort of, the, the pastry get a little bit softer. If you were to eat this right now, it just is a little bit messy because what happens is this, the pastry is still really hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these, I mean really, they are just fantastic on my little tray. I'm going to make one more and then I'm going to eat one deconstructed because, oh that's such a good, that's such good custard because you're supposed to let these set. So I'm going to do one more and then we'll try bits and pieces of one together. Now tell me that's not picture perfect. All it needs is a little fresh sprig of mint and it would just look like something that came out of a magazine. Now you really shouldn't let that set in the fridge before you eat it because if you were to cut into it now it just would all fall apart. And once everything gets a chance to sit together, the custard just makes the puff pastry softer and it makes it really easy to eat. But I'm going to make one, like I like to call it deconstructed so I can taste every element of the dish. I'm just going to take a piece of puff pastry, oh I love puff pastry, see, it's really crumbly at this point, but it's okay. Remember, this is just a taste test for me. A little bit of that, a little bit of that, and I'll just go in for a fresh raspberry as well, because I'm worth it. A little one for myself. I love it all. Mm. I don't even know 
how to describe it. It's flaky, it's crumbly. That custard will be good on a shoe. That's how good that is. And that little bit of tartness from the fresh raspberry and the raspberry jam. It is just a match made in food heaven. If you've never made Napoleons before, give them a try. I guarantee you, you will love them and they're a total showstopper. The full written recipe will be alarainthekitchen.com. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. If you remake these, make sure you share a picture because I'm dying to see your recreation. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me and I'll see you soon. Bye.